All right, today's the day to start the Peaks and Ridges cowl. And I'm really excited about this one because I love this pattern, written for River City Yarns by Ann Budd, one of my favorite designers. Anyway, she's um, suggesting in the pattern that we use a very stretchy bind off, or sorry, a very stretchy cast on and a stretchy bind off. But the cast on is what I'm gonna focus on right now. Um, she likes to use the old Norwegian or a twisted German uh, method for casting on. I'm going to show you how to do that. I've wound up my ball and I've got my knitting needles here and my buddy Hayden is over on the side and he's going to help me out by handing me things. So to do the um, old Norwegian cast on I'm using um, a guide from Interweave and it recommends that we set aside or use about half an inch of yarn for every stitch that we need to cast on. So given the number of cast on stitches, that means I need about 75 inches of yarn. So I'm going to ask Hayden to hand me my tape measure. Thanks, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put 25 inches on the, the mat that I'm working on is actually about 24 inches wide. So I'm going to use my mat here. It's a little bit off screen, so you won't be able to see it. But the idea is leave about six inches of yarn from your tail and then start measuring. So if I go across my mat three times and then maybe leave just a little bit more for extra, then I can make my slip knot. So I'll just leave a little bit more here just to be sure. And I'm going to put my slip knot on my needle. Okay, to do this cast on, I'll put my ball out of screen here so it's not distracting. You've got the tail end of your cast on and you've got the end that's attached to the ball. So that's that end. I like to put the tail end over my thumb. To do this cast on, it's just like a regular long tail cast on. So I've got one strand going over my thumb and one strand going over my finger. I'm holding the stitch on my needle with my forefinger of my uh, oh, right you hand. Can't see. Turn off. It's okay, Hayden. Thanks, though. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my needle and I'm going to go underneath both loops on my thumb. Then I'm going to dip the needle into the inside of that loop on my thumb, go all the way around to my finger and grab the loop off my finger, and then I take it back down through the loop on my thumb. That's the tricky part right there. The rest of this I find pretty easy. So let's do it again. Take your needle in your right hand and go under both loops on your thumb. Then dip that needle back into the middle of the thumb coming out towards you. Take the needle over and grab the yarn from your forefinger and bring it back into the loop on your thumb. But you see that little twist there? You're just going to go in between and then drop the loop off your thumb and snug it up. What do you think, Hayden? Is that working out okay? Yeah. Let's do it again. So under both strands of the yarn on your thumb, take your needle into the middle of that loop on your thumb, bring it up over, grab the yarn off your finger, and then just slightly untwist the yarn while you put it through the middle. And snug it up. I'm going to keep doing that. Under both strands on your thumb, into the loop on the middle of your thumb, into the middle of the loop on your thumb, Go and grab the strand from your finger, take it back in between the loops, uh, the loop on your thumb, drop the loop on your thumb and snug it up. And here we go. Once you get the hang of it, it's a very easy cast on that's smooth. And you can find yourself casting on 150 stitches without too much trouble. Hayden is inspecting the contents of my notions bag. Did you find anything interesting in there, buddy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what did you find? Just stuff. Just stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to keep continuing to cast on my stitches for my Peaks and Ridges cowl, and then I'll join you again so I can show you how to join up uh, in the round with uh, making sure that you don't have any twists in your needle. Um, one thing you can do while you're casting on is put a locking stitch marker, or sorry, just a stitch marker on every 20th stitch or so, and then counting isn't so hard. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 
14, 16, 18, 19, and cast on one more stitch, and then just put a stitch marker on there, and then um, and then I can just count from the 20th stitch on. All right, so I've cast on 150 stitches, um, and you can see my stitch markers are in place here, so that helps me to remember how many stitches um, I've cast on without recounting from the beginning. And so now we're going to get joined in the round, being careful not to twist the stitches. So these stitches here, which are not attached to the ball, you see how I've got a, an end here with my tail and the yarn that's attached to the ball. I'm going to start at the opposite end and just push my stitches out, up onto the hard part of the needle like this. And then I'm going to make sure that as I work my way around, the, all the cast on edge is facing into the center of my needle. So these stitches can get swirled around and that can create a twist in your knitting. So you just want to make sure before you start that your cast on edge is all facing the inside of the needle. Now we want the um, yarn that's attached to the ball, the what yarn we're going to knit with, we want that to be on the right hand side and you want to make sure that you're not using your tail. You can trim your tail at this point or sometimes what I do is I'll just put a slip knot in it and that way if I reach for it I'll see the feel the slip knot and I'll know that's not the yarn to use. I'm going to leave my stitch markers in here for now because as I work my first round I'll count again just to make sure that I have the right number of stitches. If you end up with one or two less or one or two more then on this first round you can increase or decrease to get the right number of stitches. Remember, it, I, I mean, you really don't want to cast on a whole lot of stitches again, so just make an adjustment on your first round. I'll place a stitch marker here to indicate the beginning of my round. My stitches are all, my cast on edge is all facing to the inside, and the instruction to begin is to start with a purl round. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front like this, insert my needle into the first stitch purlwise, and I'm going to begin with a round of purling. So I'm just going to stick it in here and purl the first stitch. Now, I have to work my way around that stitch. Don't worry about this too much. Once you've got that stitch on, give it, give your yarn a little tug to tighten up any gap in the stitches and then purl your next stitch. And I will count as I go. After this first round, we'll again check to make sure that the um, stitches are not twisted and if they are I'll show you that there is an option for putting that twist into your joining yarn as opposed to um, taking it all off and starting again. So first round is purling, count your stitches again, make sure you've got the right number and I'll meet you at the end of the round for the next segment. All right, so here I am at the end of my round. I've done my last purl stitch here and I've passed my stitch marker over. And you'll see there's a little bit of a gap here in the, in the cast on edge. That's just because if you pull these stitches apart, you release some of the yarn that actually belongs down under here. So I'm not gonna pull too hard on them. I'm just gonna pinch those tips together and make sure that I have no twists in my in my cast on edge. So it's a little bit harder to do at this point. Let me just stick this up there. Because the um, the first row of knitting actually increases the uh, span of the stitches. So they now they now reach around the um, the needle better. So I'm just going around here and making sure, even through all these ruffles, that there is no twist in my knitting. Now if there was a twist, you could straighten it out and bring it up to the point here and you could, I'll just take my stitch marker off here and show you. I'm just going to do this. So as I come around now, I've, I've inserted a twist into my knitting which I do not want and as I come around here I'm going to straighten it out. So as I, as I do that the twist ends up being over my needle right here. And so what I'm going to do is just dip my needle under and put that twist if there was one into this little bit of yarn here. So that's the trick for removing twist on your after your first round 
of work and that's the only time that you can do it. I'm going to put my stitch marker back on here and I'm going to begin the next row of work on this particular pattern and then when we get to the pattern stitch itself I'll come back and talk to you about how to do that. Alright, keep going. Alright, so here I am. Uh, the lower edging has been finished and I'm about to start the slip stitch pattern. This pattern is actually quite simple, but when you first read it, you might be a little confused, so here's how it goes. The instructions are to slip five stitches purlwise with yarn in front. Um, we've just finished a knit row, so the yarn's in the back. So simply bring your yarn to the front, and to slip five stitches purlwise, you're just going to insert the needle as if to purl, and slip five stitches over without working them. The next instruction is to purl one, so you slide your stitch into the next stitch to purl it and then spreading your stitches out bring your yarn in front and purl that stitch. You want to leave a nice long strand in front of those stitches long enough that it doesn't pucker things up um, but it doesn't leave a huge uh, loop in front of your stitches either. So we've done the purl one the next instruction is to knit one and then you're going to slip one again purl wise but this time with the yarn in the back. The next instruction is to knit one and then to purl one. This is the 10 stitch repeat for this row so once you've done it once you should have 10 stitches 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and you're going to do it again. Slip 5, spread your stitches out and then purl the next one and continue on in the pattern as, as instructed. You will do this 15 times around because you have 150 stitches. So I'll meet you at the end of the row and we'll show you what to do next. All right, here we are on the second round and this one's pretty simple. Just follow the instructions and um, ignore the little float down below. We're gonna deal with that in round three. All right, see you then. So now we're at round three of the pattern and here's again where things could be a little confusing until you do them the first time. So the instructions are to knit two and then to bring your needle underneath the horizontal float. So stick your needle under there you will knit the next stitch and as you knit it, bring the yarn uh, under the float as well. And you'll just trap the float up into that stitch. Um, then you'll continue on in the pattern. Uh, where am I here? Knit one and then knit two. Uh, and then purl one, knit one, slip one, knit one and purl one. Again, let me show you that part here. So going to knit halfway to the float, middle, stick your needle under the float into the stitch on the row and then when you knit it make sure that your yarn comes underneath the float to trap it in place like that and finish off the pattern in the regular manner. All right, one more time just for clarity. So we knit two, stick your needle under the float, knit the next stitch and bring the yarn forward and under the float to make that peak. And that is uh, all the technical components of the pattern itself. I hope you have a wonderful time knitting this uh, cowl. We love it and we've done it in lots of different yarns and the um, variegated uh, the variegated yarn and the peaks and ridges in here look absolutely stunning. So enjoy. <laughs>